Hey friends, Paisley and Glue here, and the new Doctor Strange movie is coming out. I made the costume from the first movie back in 2017 when the first movie came out, and the design for that movie is just like out of this world. The costumes are so cool, they're so intricate, and I learned a lot of new techniques making that build that I thought I would share with you. So I did make this costume for my partner who is a fair bit larger than me, especially in the shoulders. So right now this is on my dress form, which is uh, size six. So the shoulders section does sort of leave something to be desired on this uh, sort of mannequin situation, mostly that this shoulder is not um, sort of filled out, which it is when he wears it. So let's start with this under tunic piece. This is pretty basic. It's just this brown linen tunic, or sorry, brown. This is blue. Uh, this is blue linen tunic, and it's got a sort of dicky piece inset here that has this trim with this folded back section. And this both were trims that actually I found at Joann's, but again, that was five years ago, so who knows now. And you can see that there is a slit here in this dicky seam that the cape attachment slides through and then buckles underneath the front here. And that is to try to keep it from sliding back and hitting you in the throat. It works medium well. Um, in the movie, he had sort of an internal structure that the cape like locked into. Um, that was not something that I want to make. So that's fine. This works fine. Then there is this over tunic. And then this is this is all one piece, sort of this wing flange piece, and then all of this embroidered piece, and then this sits on top, but it is all attached. Um, and this is this medium, slightly lighter color linen. The shoulder piece has some batting in it that then I uh, quilted and then I've painted into it to give it a little bit more dimension. Then this is pleated fabric that's sort of tacked in place as needed and then again painted to give it some dimension and some distressing. And then I did actually uh, cross stitch all of this by hand, which was a lot. Um, Jed Amanda did a great version of this using a um, decorative stitch that she has on her her um, sewing machine, and it looks really good and was much faster than what I did. I really like cross stitching, so that was fine. Uh, but if you're looking to maybe not take one million years, that would be a smarter idea. Um, it is tacked because I didn't. You can kind of see here it's pulling away. I didn't cross stitch underneath the pleats because why? Work smarter, not harder. So then I did tack the pleats there to keep that all together. This front piece is actually, um, well, this whole band is sort of a faced band to to the tunic. So this sort of like sandwiches over the edge of these pleated sections. And so then I could cross stitch this sort of laying flat, not involving all of this. But these pieces are then like a, like it's like a two little tucks behind, but you can see it's just the same piece of facing that I've just taken some little tucks and then top stitched on. And then this, is actually just painted to appear like it's both lighter and darker. And I did the same thing at the bottom, whereas I believe there's multiple layers in the one for the, sh for the movie, but this is just two tucks that I added to the hem and I painted one lighter and I painted one darker. So it looks like there's multiple layers of fabric, but it's actually still pretty lightweight. So that's kind of the tunic piece. Um, then the belts were, I thought, really fun to make. There's sort of a variety of things going on here. So this is all pleather and it's bound off in itself. And then this is fabric that I tucked and stitched into this section and then painted with the gold paint. Um, this was 
some jute belting that I found that was perfect. And then these are all just EVA foam. So that could have been better, <laughs> but they work and they're fine. Uh, I did buy the sling rings. And then these two belts, this was a purchased belt for this middle section. And then I top stitched on pleather to do the edge. You can see how it's kind of unfinished on the back to avoid more bulkiness than we need. And then I did make this belt by, there is a piece of vinyl behind here that then I cut slits into. It's kind of like a series of buttonholes and then you weave this other vinyl around it and it makes this sort of chevron pattern. The medallion here is foam that's covered in warbler. I think we can see it if we flip this over. So you can kind of see how it's, it's real messy on the back. Uh, so this is the foam piece and then the warbler wraps over the top and then just all the hot glue in the land. It is a combination of um, cotton cord and embroidery thread. And then again, wrapping that jute cord around itself, hot glue, and then I think I used, I used some sort of stiffener. Maybe it might've just been like, um, this might've just been um, flex bond to kind of stiffen the jute and kind of make it not, like I didn't want it to fray into like a fluffy bits. So I wanted it to stay kind of stiff. So that's what, that helped to do that. Um, yeah, and then the back of the belt, I'm not, I mean, okay, I'll show you, that's fine. It's fine, no worries. So this is all kind of messy back here, but there's a lacing detail to allow it to be adjustable so that I can wear it and my partner can wear it with some buckles. And you'll never see it because it is behind the cape. So the cape, I did have this printed on Spoonflower. Um, it's probably still available somewhere. I don't remember how much I had, but it wasn't really enough which is kind of okay because it's it's supposed to be all kind of pieced back here anyway. So I had to do some creative piecing. I feel like I got, I feel like I got four yards and it like wasn't really enough because I think it's only 45 inches wide. But it looks really great and I didn't have to do anything to it, which is exciting. So let's start at the top here, the cape. I used, um, I don't even know how many different kind of fabrics. The top part of this cape is a, a faux suede in red. And then this was a fabric that I found, definitely polyester, but it has the sort of like right wooly texture for the underneath. There is horse hair in here. You can kind of see my pad stitching marks to shape the, the collar into that sort of exaggerated collar shape that he has. And then this was kind of the perfect piping that I found um, that's in that seam. And it already had this like wrapped detail on it, which was kind of great. Um, I did sculpt and cast these medallions in um, plastic. It was like smooth on 300 probably and then use enamel paints to paint the little red details in there. And then if we go into the shoulder piece, we can see all the vermicelli embroidery that I did. So I embroidered this on to more of that faux suede, and this is a one millimeter waxed cotton cord, and I will link this, it's still available. Uh, it was kind of the perfect thing. It's just flexible enough that it's easy to embroider but it's still nice and dimensional. Then, and of course I did that before I put it all into the um, cape cloak. This is leather cording that I purchased and I will link the Etsy site below if they are still making this. Um, it's beautiful. I will not say that these seams are easy <laughs> to get all of the leather edges in there and like 
get everything laying really flat, especially like it's underneath this medallion, which is nice, but like these, these corners were super tricky. You can kind of see this one over here. It just ends up being pretty bulky with all of these things coming in and ending at the same point. It's a lot. It was definitely a construction challenge, shall we say. Um, then I had a terrible time finding what this trim was. This is not really my favorite thing, but it's, it's fine. Uh, mostly you just need a lot of it because it is really like all over the cape. I think it's supposed to be like a cut chenille sort of situation. Um, what I found is okay. And then this was more of that leather trim I purchased from the same Etsy site and then I cut this edging into it myself. And then I used a combination of applique and ribbon embroidery on the edge here to mimic that sort of dimensional embroidery that he has. I really like ribbon embroidery. I think it adds a really cool look to it. So I applique on sort of this Y shape piece and then some of it was just like this is just um I just use like stitch witchery basically to attach that on and then used a machine and some a little bit of hand embroidery to just pick out a couple details there. This trim is obviously just um, zigzagged on. It's not my favorite trim. It's kind of like, oh, that trim that everyone gets from Joann's, but it's fine. And then you can see how this leather kind of lives inside this pleat of the edge here. And then there's a separate facing that wraps around the edge and then finishes finishes the side of the cloak. But that kind of gives it like a really nice dimensional look to it. It's sort you know like it has depth. It flows over the shoulder really nicely. Um, I think there must be I must have interfaced this a little bit. This velveteen, I think there's I think there's horse hair in there. I don't remember, guys. It's been like five years, so I think there's horse hair in here, which helps a little bit give that some stability. But just the velveteen and the faux suede, really, you know, like it's got some some heftiness to it, which is really nice. And then heading over to the other side, this is like where all the crazy seam work goes. So this is obviously an incredibly asymmetrical cape, like. I can't, I did not save this pattern because <laughs> once I cut it all apart, it was not going to go back together very easily. But the like piecing that you have to do to get all of these pieces is pretty bonkers. Um, and then it's sort of pleated into this shoulder cap detail. Oh, they're all my studio lights. Let's just turn this way. Ooh. That's better. So it ends up being sort of a game of your you stitch all of these patchwork pieces into these strips and then you attach those to the other strips and so it's kind of kind of turns into sort of a quilt sort of situation and is quite heavy but this fabric is um, again that velveteen and that I did the ribbon embroidery on and I did use um, some um, embossing powder and I made a little uh, stamp out of EVA foam and I used embossing powder to get that pretty, I think a pretty decent facsimile of that um, kind of checkerboard pattern that he has. My stamp was clearly not, uh, <laughs> the repeat was not great. So like I've got a bunch of it's not very even, but it does just fine. Um, and it was pretty easy and fast and cheap. So I like that. The shoulder piece, there is, I think, again, horse hair on the inside of this to try to keep it shaped. I don't think that that was the most successful thing. 
Um, and then these strips are all sort of individually sewn and then placed over that shoulder piece and then attached into the rest of the cloak. Again, these corners where all of these pipes and trims and things is, um, was a lot, it was a lot. But it ends up being a really, really cool cloak that has a lot of depth, it has a lot of texture, it flows really nicely, it's got a lot of movement and body, and I think looks pretty close to the one that he has on screen. So even five, five years later, I'm really happy with this costume and um, I think we will get to use it again this year quite a bit and that is exciting. And then this last piece, the, um, are these armbands and I just want to show you I did put a zipper on this just so it was a little easier to get on and the, the, so they would always look the same but the zipper is pretty well masked between these little tassels that sort of live along this placket line and then there's a series of straps that wrap around and cross over the placket So the zipper is a little bit less obtrusive in that way. So once those all cover the placket, the, uh, the zipper is much less noticeable. It's mostly just remembering where all of your little snaps are hidden. Um, I did, I did make my own trim out of um, thick embroidery. That's more like cruel, I guess. So using two different weaving techniques, I did make these two, but then this is just a twill tape and this is just a cotton something, some sort of woven cotton. And I believe that those both came from Joann's. And then the Eye of Agamotto, I sculpted the outside piece and then cast it in plastic. Um, there is a, this is a little plastic, half of a plastic sphere on the inside that's painted green on the inside. And then there's just a little tiny LED in there that lights up. But then these pieces are actually EVA foam. So they're getting a little bit brittle now here five years later, but they're hanging on. And those were just glued into the eye after it was cast and mostly painted to give us that sort of like layered effect. And that was much easier than, I don't even know how you would, I don't even know how you would cast that. I don't know, I'm not very good at that sort of thing. Um, and then this is just some wire, uh, sorry, wire, some leather, thick leather cording. It's got um, embroidery floss wrapped around it. One side is painted, I believe it was, it, it was black and then I painted one side red. And there you go. So that's about it for this sort of rundown of how I made this costume. Hopefully that gives you some ideas on how to incorporate some of these construction techniques into your own project. And good luck, this costume is incredible and extremely complicated. So hope to see lots of really fun Doctor Stranges coming up in the next couple years in person and online. See you next time.